Hi guys, welcome to Outbox Sports. Today we're going to be talking about fantasy football and who we think our top players at each position are and who our sleepers are. Ross, who do you have as the number one? <laughs> Uh, Ross, who do you have as your top quarterback? Hey, all right. For all you fantasy football fans out here, these guys are the ones that make it happen. They don't get their stats on the sheet or in fantasy football, but Eric Flowers, left tackle for the New York Giants, gets it done. I'm going to start out talking about Eli Manning. First of all, it's his second year under offensive coordinator Ben McAdoo. He had the second most receive, uh, passing yards in his career last year and the most touchdowns at 35, only through 14 picks. He's a very low-key guy that might slip through the cracks in your draft, and you could pick him up in like the ninth or tenth round and still have an elite quarterback at, at your position. Okay, I always kind of miss my backup, QB. He's available. Eli Manning is not a backup quarterback. He's not. He's, he's not. But he's, he's a he's solid a, backup if you need one. If you get lucky. That's what he is. If you pick up back to back quarterback, I would start him too. I started him two years ago. He he did okay. Honestly, I think you should go Drew Brees at QB. You can't go wrong with that. All he does is put up numbers, Mm -hmm. yards. Like he's the perfect fantasy football. He is the quarterback. I mean, when I play fantasy football, he did great numbers for me. So I definitely think Drew Brees. It it doesn't hurt to go that way. I mean, he has potential to overtake Tom Brady with the suspension right now Mm -hmm. in touchdowns in overall his his career because he's suspended. So he'd be top three in Mm -hmm. that regard. And then that offense is open for him. Yeah. It runs through him. Oh, it's a absolutely. passing attack offense. Mm-hmm. He's going to succeed. I, I would agree with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, Either yeah. between him or a healthy Aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. it's it's hard to argue. But I think safety wise, Drew Brees yeah. indefitely yeah. is a great quarterback. I mean, I have Cam because he's going to throw the ball and on top of it, he's going to get, get the extra yards from running. Right. So. He's the offensive MVP in the league. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can't handle yeah. Cam. So if he's available, yeah, I wouldn't draft a QB until the. Fourth, fifth. Yeah, but, I mean, a lot of people uh, tend to some, take their quarterback yeah, number one, but first. in I that first round, I think Manning go first round, which is like that was it makes crazy. Sense, but no, no. I wouldn't, I couldn't. I mean, first round really for wide receivers, Gronk, and then running backs. Yeah. I think any mix of those guys, and then from there you kind of want to fill your skill positions, and then like you said, maybe fourth round if mm-hmm. you can, if it's available right there, mm-hmm. you, you have the yeah. luxury yeah. to yeah. take a quarterback. So speaking of tops, uh, you want to just go through the list here, oh, yeah, and we yeah, can yeah. go through our position-wise. We mm-hmm. can throw in defense in there because then a lot, lot, not a lot of defense gets some love. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. um, we I can, can go give defense any love. <laughs> <laughs> like forget that. That's we can go like quarterbacks, running backs, mm-hmm. receivers, tight ends. We can even throw kickers in there. Um, I love, I love ranking. Hey, kickers are great. Top to bottom. I, mean. I was a kicker. Hey, really? So, 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 yeah. so what do you think about running backs? Running backs, and you can't go wrong with AP. Adrian oh, Peterson. Yeah. If he, I mean, he's working he's on that fumbling issue. Yeah. So if he can fix that up, he's been shown he's mm-hmm. the man. Yeah. Um, and I like a, a healthy Jamal Charles. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's come back from ACL injuries before. He brings that catching dynamic out of the backfield mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, and then my sleeper for running back, I'm going to go Matt Forte. Uh, he, he was hurt last season, but coming to this Jets team now, strong mm-hmm. offensive line. He'll be great for whoever the quarterback is. I yeah. think they're going to bail him out a lot with uh, screen passes and yeah. stuff like that. He has an excellent pass catcher. So I think that'll help his game. That's the thing with PPR. you got a running back and catch passes. You're getting a ton oh, of yeah, more points. Exactly. Yeah. So I have Todd Gurley. He okay. is ranked okay. fifth in running back points last season. And he didn't play three games. Yeah. So to be up there, missing three games, losing some stats. Mm-hmm. And then they lack a strong quarterback play. So he's going to get a lot he's of... He's great. Yeah, guy. he's going to get the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so he's really just basically the focal point of Rams offense. That's Last season he had 229 carries. And then he had 19 carries eight times last season. As a rookie. Yeah, as a, rookie. As a rookie. He's only going to get better this year. And his volume is only going to go up. As a serious oh, yeah. injury coming from college... A dude is a stud. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, mm-hmm. whenever I played someone, like, I mean, whenever I played my friend who had him, mm-hmm. she would definitely He would win, yeah. He would be all, not, that's not even a surprise, because he's just oh, really yeah. talented. All right. All right. He, right. I'm getting him this I think I think David Johnson is a guy who should definitely be picked by somebody, because, one, he was a rookie last year, mm-hmm. and this is a guy who was, when the season started, he was third in depth chart. Yep. And he, throughout the, the season, managed to, like, just ball out, especially towards mm-hmm. the end. And now, mm-hmm. him being the number one guy for the, the entire season, I think we're going to see great numbers. Yeah. I, mean, he, he was- I have Lamar Miller as my number one running back choice. Let me just tell you why. So, under Bill O'Brien, Aaron Foster in the 
six or seven games that he played last last year and however many he played the year before, he averaged 23 carries a game. So you make that over the course of a season, 16 games, that's 368 um, carries. Lamar Miller has had 241 carries in the past, in last year, and he was the sixth best running back in the NFL in fantasy points. So his volume is only going to go up and especially with DeAndre Hopkins coming into his own, yeah. Will Fuller, Braxton Miller, and all of these wep- Brock Osweiler, they are going to have a very potent offense, and they're just going to hand the ball off to Lamar Miller. And with a little bit more structure in Houston, Lamar Miller is going to take off. I think he's going to be number one running back this year. And he has more carries than Tiger. So, I will... Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, hey, so- volume speaks. Yeah. You, know? yeah, you, you get the ball more, you get... You see oh, yeah. Derrick Henry in college football exactly. last year. He got the yep. ball like two times as much as the next closest running back. Mm. Um, so I think he has potential to be, like you said, a, I'm going to say a top five back. I don't yeah. know about number one, uh, but yeah, definitely top, top five. five. Mm. Like that, he, that was a bold prediction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was a very bold prediction. But like you said, bold he said Jamal Charles. <laughs> but I have, as my sleeper, Spencer Ware, because I think he'll come in. Mm-hmm. He's basically the number two guy now. Okay. And, you know, last year he's kind of the number three guy, but he did get six touchdowns, 5.6 yards per carry, and 403 yards total. Mm-hmm. So if they're going to give Jamal Charles some rest, he's going to be the guy who's going to get those extra carries. So ESPN has him going in the 14th round. So if you can, like, just pick him up, even on the waivers later on, you know what I mean? Yeah. So just a guy to get in your arsenal. If you got injuries, just throw him on the bench mm-hmm. and... I think I think a big sleeper is Jeremy Langford, uh, second year mm-hmm. guy uh, from Michigan State. He is now the number one running back for the Chicago Bears. Matt Forte left, for so I think he and he he's been balling late in the season. Mm-hmm. So I think honestly, him being the number one guy now, he has so much talent, and if he can stay healthy, yeah. he needs to stay mm-hmm. healthy. But he'll definitely have a great. Yeah, game. I mean, it also hurt that the Bears were not very good last year. Yeah, oh, totally. But that's what overall. That's what I like about running backs is. Who's going to be the bell cow? It's not yeah. even so. Jeremy Langford and um, Jamal Charles. Like, if you're going to put those two together, Jamal Charles has Spencer Ware and Chartendrick West that are taking carries away from him. J- Jamal Charles is probably has the better upside, but he also gets hurt more. And yeah. you have Jeremy Langford, who's going to get the ball on every single snap. And then receiver, you can't really argue Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, top two. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then. Are you, are you going for all of them? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Go We're ahead. going through our list, you know why okay. not? Um, and then, since I've been a sleeper for running back, sleeper for wide receiver, Devonte pa- uh, Devonte Parker from the Miami Dolphins. Mm-hmm. He's playing that X position that Demarius Thomas played in Adam Gase's offense now. Mm-hmm. Uh, another year experience. He had a great second half to the season. His last four games, I think, I think it was. Four or six games where he had mm-hmm. almost 500 yards. I think he had fourth touchdown, something mm-hmm. like that. Um, so he developed later on in the season after a disappointing first half. Yeah. And I think another year of experience, learning the offense, playing mm-hmm. opposite Jarvis Landry, Tannehill can get yeah, more hopefully comfortable. Tannehill, yeah. 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 Hopefully Tannehill can start working Jordan Cameron in. He, yeah. he was an awesome player for the Cleveland Browns when they had him. And he hasn't really done that much since he's come to Miami. And I think that this is his year to start taking some – uh, some looks away from you know Jarvis Landry. I've had him you know, every year for the past three years. A little disappointing. Jordan, yeah. Jordan Cameron. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's one of those. Done. Yeah, one of those not really that. Really hit or miss guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, wide receiver. I have Antonio Brown. He did wonders for me last year. So. Can't argue. Best if I can get him. Yeah. yeah. He's he's, he's number one. He's number one overall yeah. quality. Mm-hmm. I got him at number three last year, so I was, I was I was happy with that. That's very interesting. okay. I'm going Julio Jones. This guy, I think he gets a third of, of Matt Ryan's passes go to Julio Jones. That's like ridiculous. So mm-hmm. I think receptions, he's going to definitely be up there. Yards mm-hmm. going to be up there. Oh, he's a burner there. too. Yeah. Burner. And he's, he's a big guy. Like him compared, like Riley Wild, he's, he's getting old. You know, he's not really putting up how he used to. And he's a huge guy. He can just go up there and yep. get it. So mm-hmm. I'm going Julio all the way. Mm-hmm. Personally, I love Allen Robinson. I had him on my team. He's like a three year guy out of Penn State. Yeah. He had a really great career in college. He is one of the most consistent wide receivers in the league. I mean, this is each week's uh, points from last year. He scored two, only two points in the first week, but then he went 29, 6, 8, 21, 16, 17, 14, 13, 13, 13, 37, 
6, 11, 23, and 12. You're not, so he had a few big games, Antonio Brown-like games, but overall, he was putting up points. Yeah. He had consistent contributions to my team, and that's something that, you know, maybe he doesn't have like 40-point games like Antonio Brown all the time, but he does add a sort of consistency to your team that you're never going to be like, okay, Allen Robinson is playing the Seattle Seahawks. He's on. He's being guarded by Richard Sherman. He's not going to be able to get open. He, he's proven that he can consistently do that and get open, which is why I have him as one of my favorite wide receivers this year. Can't argue that. that Plus, he's a really he's cool. a really good value pick too. People aren't oh, probably yeah. going to be picking him in mm-hmm. you know second round even. Yeah, maybe, I got him for he my may be a, last year. He may be a third round guy. Yeah, he ended up being my number one wide receiver, but I, he was playing the flex just because yeah. I got him at such a good deal. Yeah. So my sleeper for wide receiver is Torrey Smith. I think you could probably grab him in the last round, actually. And if you look at the 49ers, who do they have to throw to? That's really what he's their number one receiver. No one. one. It's basically him. He's basically the target in Chip Kelly's offense. On a terrible offense last season. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anquan Bolden's no longer there, so that's not an option. Then on top of that, on the 49ers depth chart, he has the most yards of, you know, best stats. Most experience. So he's going to be that main target. He had a horrible season last year. Year. That's the thing. People are going to sleep on from last exactly. year's exactly. Yeah. season. 33 receptions. I mean, he's still and it couldn't, his prime right it couldn't yeah, be this. solely on him either. I mean, the, oh, yeah, yeah. he had quarterbacks coming left and right between Kaepernick and Gabbert. They really had no offensive scheme going. The team was in disarray. So I think a lot of people are going to be sleeping on Tony yeah, Smith. problem. You yeah. have Blaine Gabbert throwing the ball. Yeah. Like, I don't care if you're Antonio Brown. If you have Blaine Gabbert throwing the ball, it's tough. rather than Ben <laughs> Roethlisberger, you're, like, you're, yeah. you're, you're going to take a huge yeah. hit fantasy yeah. class. My sleeper is I don't usually do this. I picked a rookie coming in for my sleeper. Sterling Shepard out of Oklahoma playing for the New York Football Giants. Odell Beckham is going to get so much attention this year, especially with Victor Cruz coming back, that it's going to open up just the entire world to Sterling Shepard. He's going to come in learning from one of the best receivers in the game in Victor Cruz and Odell, Mm -hmm. and he has all the intangibles. He dropped maybe... I think he dropped under 10 passes in his entire career at Oklahoma. He is one of the most consistent route running Oh, he's the best receivers. route runner in that he's, draft. Yeah, probably. he is the best route runner yeah. in the draft. A lot of people were saying that the Giants got him at a steal in the second round. He reminds me a lot of Antonio Brown in the beginning right. parts of his career because he is just that meticulous route runner. Um, I mean, there was some talk in Giants camp that they were – Thinking like they misinterpreted what he was doing. They were like, "Oh yeah, that's Odell. That's Odell." And it's, they're looking at him, and it's eighty-seven. Oh, it's Sterling Shepard. Like that's, that's not our. That's not our, yeah. that's not our guy. That's that's our rookie. Yeah, he, he's so. actually going to be a, a big oh, yeah. contributor. Eli's going to have a big year, throwing to a bunch of really good targets. Get rid of Preston Parker, whoever that guy was. Ruben Randall. I don't like Ruben him Randall, either. Ruben like <laughs> Stone Hands. Ruben Get rid of the Stone Hands guys. That's crazy. Yes, I mean, and Shepard. He averaged fourteen point nine yards per catch in. College, mm-hmm. and on top of that, like Cruz is coming back, but we'll he see. just had so many injuries two years away from football. I mm-hmm. think Shepard's gonna be number two. Yeah, most likely. Uh, definitely. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. Victor Cruz will be able to run the flex a little. I mean, the mm-hmm. uh, slot a little bit if he gets healthy. I mean, obviously he suffered a really bad injury. Yeah. Um, but if you do get Victor Cruz in the slot, Odell on the outside, and Sterling Shepard on the outside, that's a leap in good. Yeah. Pass catching wide receivers, we have to jump to tight ends. Man, with tight ends. And I think we can say unanimously the number oh, one yeah. tight end. Yeah. Rob Gronkowski. Yes. Now, but, but check this out. You guys are, might think I'm crazy, but I have Rob Gronkowski, of course. But mm-hmm. my sleeper tight end, Marcellus Bennett. Now, he also is now, he signed with the Patriots. But if you think about the last time we had two tight ends, Aaron Hernandez right. and Rob Gronkowski, he just did some big damage to those two. And mm-hmm. these two are arguably more talented. Exactly. These two are arguably yeah. way more talented. So if I'm going to go with sleeper tight end, I'm going to go with Bennett. And you're going to see some big things coming from the Patriots. That's so a scary. Like that. scary. Like that. That's going to be real scary. So I'm going to see, man. I'm going to go with Tyler Eifert. Mm-hmm. Now, I know he's definitely had an okay. injury problems yeah. and, and everything. But for a while last year, he, he was having three touchdown games. Yes. Yeah. Like 150 yard, two touchdown games. Andy Dalton really looks to him as his safety net. I mean, I'm gonna jump to your boy Jordan Cameron and say he's a sleeper on that Miami Dolphins team, oh, yeah. only because we saw what Adam Gase did with Julius Thomas, mm-hmm. and you 
he's not as athletic or as great of a tight end, but you give him weapons like Jarvis Landry and Devontae Parker, or Kenny Stills on that team, mm-hmm. uh, J.S. Yeah, right? Yeah, he's got they Zimmer have a Burner. pretty good offense, and then you throw in that extra tight end for Tannehill. Mm-hmm. I think he'll use him and utilize his skills, and he could be a potential sleeper for most guys mm-hmm. in, in fantasy. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Like Brace their defense and kicker because that's it's not my, that's like my last two things I draft. I'm like it's, it's, it's important though. I think yeah, sometimes there, there's some. Oh yeah, kickers have one week game. I think the Cardinals defense like I think the Cardinals. Yeah, they're, they're they they're they can put up points. Yeah, points. Seahawks points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. defense I just play around with. I like switch. Yeah, I, I get like three defenses. I have yeah. my defense that I'm playing until like an hour before the game starts. I think I think it up. depends because sometimes defense is, is what you kind of work with, like you know, in waivers. Yeah. Right. Just depends yeah. on who they play that week. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Matchups. Yeah. Yeah. Match-ups. 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 That's how I do it. So don't freak out mm-hmm. if you don't yeah, get yeah, a good don't defense. Don't freak out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and kickers is another thing that you can don't draft your kicker. In the beginning. Yeah. yeah. No, please don't. <laughs> don't don't draft. Please. Like, don't be that person. Both letters now. Don't draft a kicker. <laughs> like wait till the last. Break. I mean, you can you can like look at statistics and be like, oh, like the Vikings were you know always ending their drives on like the twenty yard line and kicking field goals, yeah. but like you can't really look yeah. at like last year's like stats yeah, to compare with this year's stats for a kicker. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only the only thing you can really look at is consistency yeah. and like. Josh Brown for the Giants. Right. There's, yeah, there's, there's only a handful. That's there. pretty much all yeah. you need. Okay, so I'm going to do two more things. First off, if you had the number one pick, who would you choose? Second, how do you like structure your draft? I had the number one like, pick. Who would I choose? With picks. If I had the number one pick right now, I have to go Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown, me too. I, I you know, just because of, of who he is. You know, he's, he's a baller, okay? And he puts up great numbers. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I had him last season, so I'm like, I'm not biased, but like, I'm yeah, going to no, keep yeah, that. But, but you understand. You know why. Yes. Exactly. I, like, he's the only person on my lineup I could always rely on. Yeah. So. I mean, for me, and I play in PPR leagues, with this now newly suspended Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, Le'Veon yeah. Bell. He potentially would have been my number one in PPR because of those receptions and how well he plays. I mean, um, still pick him but, up. Like, oh, just, just don't Not get him with one. your first pick. Yeah. I'd go Antonio Brown as well mm-hmm. because he gets all those extra yards after the catch. Yeah. He can I mean, put the big obviously, plays. Obviously, he's one of the best players in the NFL. If mm-hmm. not the best player in the NFL, maybe besides J.J. Watt right now. So I was talking mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, t- Tom Brady... Like, this guy was like, Tom Brady. We're like, talking I don't fans. Know, I don't, I don't can't, want to talk about that. You can't have a conversation with this guy. Yeah, Tom Brady, greatness. My, my initial reaction is to take Adrian Peterson. Okay. Just because you're looking at, like, overall, if you don't pick a running back first round, you're scram- You're definitely scrambling to get a running back in the second round. Oh, you're yeah. definitely like, okay, I picked Antonio Brown. I need to get a decent running back in this next round. Mm-hmm. And I would rather be like, okay, I can, I'll can, i draft Adrian Peterson, who you know is going to be consistent. You know, maybe get a guy like Lamar Miller or Todd Gurley or some, just to have a good running back cornerstone because those are so limited. Let us know what you guys think in the comments about our picks. Let us know your top picks. We are also looking for a few people to join our fantasy league. Join, please. So, we want to get a league yeah. together. Let's yeah. go. We so comment like, your yeah. best fantasy team name. Oh, oh, that's, that's, good. that's always tricky. That's tricky. That's a team name. That's a good so, comment one. below if you want to join or hit us up on any of our social media at Outbox Sports and let us know if you want to be in our fantasy league. So there, will, there will be plenty of trash talk, I'm sure. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, if that's you your ready. thing, I've been using like five shirt weeks and I still trash talk. Oh, I trash talk and I'm all I'm trash talk. So. I don't lose. I don't lose. <laughs> I haven't lost. I've never won time in one. So, so, we got we got something good going on. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So subscribe, Ever Left Hand Corner. Like this, comment like we said. If you want to join, videos to the right. Please join. That's about it. That's about it. Bye, guys. Cool.